So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy Ellen. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. So listen, I was chilling today, right? And I had my phone. Normally, I'd probably be scrolling through Twitter or looking at some fantasy football stuff. But I was like, yo, let me see where the James Webb t telescope is currently located right now, right? So I go look and I pull it up and I go to, I think I end up at space.com. And um, it gave me the information too. current location, currently at an observing site at LaGrange Point 2, nearly 1 million miles. And I was like, yo, that is super, super dope that you can get like an up-to-date current. Like uh, it's, all this is still new and fascinating to me. So anyway, this video right here we're about to check out though is the James Webb might prove the multiverse theory right now. Multiverse theory right now, right? So a lot of people, I see a lot of mixed feelings and emotions about a multi-universe. Do we have one? Do we not have one? Is there a parallel universe? Do we have, don't we? Everybody has mixed reviews about it. So I think that's super dope. Continue the conversation. And will they ever let us know? That's another thing to keep in the back of your mind. How long before we know? Because they may already know something and just haven't told us yet. Something to think about. But anyway, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, join the fam, and let's check this video out. The James Webb Space Telescope has safely reached its destination, the second Lagrange point, or L2. In the spring of 2022, it only needs to align its 18 mirrors. Teams of scientists already have the forthcoming years planned out. Webb will check how black holes absorb matter, and it'll peek through previously impregnable walls of cosmic dust and see how stars are born. But all of this is just going to be daily routine. Webb is also preparing for much bolder tasks to fulfill. In this video, you'll find out how can the new telescope help us find dark matter? Will we see other universes reflected in Webb's gold-plated mirrors? And what's the real reason behind launching the James Webb Super Telescope into space? Can the JWST and its observations help us determine the exact expansion rate of the universe? The Big Bang Theory states that the universe is constantly expanding. Stars and galaxies that aren't held in place by gravitational attraction move farther from each other with every second. If we figure out the precise velocity of their movement, we'll be able to see what will happen to our Milky Way in the future, and vice versa, what happened to it in the past. However, attempts to define this crucial cosmological parameter have produced probably the biggest contradiction in modern science. The expansion rate of the universe is called the Hubble constant and is measured in kilometers per second per megaparsec. Astrophysicists have developed two calculation methods, but here's the problem. The results achieved by different scientific teams don't match up. I mean, at all. The first team determined the expansion rate based on the cosmic microwave background. This is the relic radiation left over from the days when our universe was a young beauty, about 380,000 years of age. If we compare it with a 20-year-old girl, its microwave background would be a photo of her as an infant born five hours ago. Using this microwave background method, the first team finally discovered that the universe expands at 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. As for the second team, they watch how the luminosity of well-known stars located several million light years away from us changes over time. This time, we're looking at yesterday's photo of the young universe. But wait a minute, this should be the same person, but it seems that it's not. Besides, the expansion rate of the universe determined with the help of stars comes to 74 kilometers per second per megaparsec. So there's a 10% difference in the results, and it's hardly explicable. Can the JWST check which of the options is correct? Well, yes and no. The first team's cosmic microwave background is 100 times longer than the emissions the telescope can capture. It's like trying to look at a python under a microscope instead of an ant. In turn, Webb's mirror is 6.5 meters in diameter and can collect enough light to detect the slightest change in the luminosity of relatively nearby stars. 
This means that the second team will finally be able to give us super accurate information on how fast these objects are moving apart. But what makes the universe expand in the first place? We'll never know the whole truth unless we find an essential missing piece of this puzzle, an invisible and all-pervasive substance that fills the entire volume of space. How will the James Webb Telescope's observations help us understand the phenomenon of dark matter? Astrophysicists have noticed that some galaxies move like they have much larger masses than we can see. This missing invisible mass is called dark matter. According to contemporary studies, there's six times more of it in outer space than all the stars, planets, and cosmic dust put together. The well-researched gravitational lensing effect will come in handy to help JWST find dark matter. This effect happens when a gravitational field of a massive body bends the light traveling towards it. Compared to the Hubble telescope, Webb will be able to spot much more distant gravitational lenses. That'll allow scientists to discover new clumps of dark matter and determine their masses. This will bring us closer to understanding what this substance really is and what it's made of. This idea is the cause for ongoing disputes. Yet some astronomers assume that dark matter is something that all space lovers know very well. Again, when they get this information, will we receive it? That, that'd be my only gripe, bro. Because this is a ton of pertinent information, bro, that could lead to us knowing whether there is a multiverse. You know what I'm saying? Is there, isn't there? And this information that the James Webb is receiving and sending back, bro, bro, that could prove some things that we've been theorizing for, I don't know, decades and stuff like that. Even certain religions of people who've believed that there are multiverses out there. You know what I mean? So... That'd be my only thing. Just don't be trying to hold the information from us, bro. Bring us closer to understanding what this substance really is and what it's made of. This idea is the cause for ongoing disputes. Yet some astronomers assume that dark matter is something that all space lovers know very well. That's right, black holes. Although not the ones you're used to. Prehistoric black holes could have appeared less than a second after the Big Bang from and see, that's why when we watched that video about the the black the white hole, and they was talking about the black hole and how stars come into place because they can give information as to how maybe a black hole or white hole is formed. So that in correlation with what he was saying about being able to observe the stars as well, as far as the movement wise or expansion, is gonna give so much more information. <laughs> oh man, are, are y'all seeing how this stuff is tying in? That's right black holes, although not the ones you're used to. Prehistoric black holes could have appeared less than a second after the Big Bang from high density areas in space. These immense monsters could still be out there lurking unnoticed. That's like hidden pockets that you can see only if you turn your garment inside out. And since a hole of this sort isn't formed due to the explosion of a star, it could have a mass equal to something as small as a speck of dust, to something as massive as an entire galaxy. It was in the early 1970s that Stephen Hawking suggested that dark matter could be composed of these primordial black holes. Although even the web, however sharp-eyed it is, may have problems finding a primordial black hole on its own. It'll need a mighty sidekick to cope with this mission, like Doctor Strange in the latest Spider-Man movie. In 2034, space agencies will launch the LISA Gravitational Wave Observatory. It'll detect the slightest fluctuations that massive bodies can cause while moving. Then LISA will hand its notes over to the James Webb Telescope, and our superhero will investigate the area. Going back to Stephen Hawking, he's also known for a theory even more extravagant than the one about prehistoric black holes. And if our telescopes confirm it, Copernicus' revelation that Earth's not the center of the universe will sound like a lame joke from a third-rate comedian. Will the data collected by the JWST confirm the multiverse theory? In 2018, the attention of the scientific world was focused on Stephen Hawking's last paper entitled A Smooth Exit from Eternal Inflation. Co All right, I'm just breeze past by that. Last paper entitled. 
So the usual theory of inflation breaks down an internal inflation. We derive a dual, a dual description of eternal inflation in terms of deformed uh, CTF located at the threshold of eternal inflation. Does this make sense to y'all yet? <laughs> the partial function gives the amplitude of different geometrics of the threshold surface in the no boundary states. Its local and global behavior and dual toy models show the amplitude is low for surfaces which are not nearly conformal to round three sphere. My head is hurting now, y'all. Listen, 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 listen. I'm a newbie. You got to ease me into this, this type of talk right here, huh? Somebody help me out. Break this part right here down for me. Put it in layman's terms. You know what I mean? Shout out, uh, uh, just shout outs to um, Riddle and um, and them for for grabbing this information. But I need it break. I need it broken down to layman's terms for me, man. I'm a newbie, bro. Take it easy. Take your time with me. A smooth exit from eternal inflation, co-authored with Thomas Hertog. Of course, here we're not talking about the kind of inflation that makes a gallon of gas more expensive. Right. This is cosmic. That's the inflation I'm familiar with. That type of inflation when you go to the pump one month and it's two dollars or three dollars, and then you go a couple months down the line and it's five dollars, six dollars. Yeah, that's the type of inflation I'm the. But this is totally different. About the kind of inflation that makes a gallon of gas more expensive. This is cosmic inflation of the early universe. A regular explosion spreads evenly in all directions, but our universe suddenly started to expand exponentially soon after the Big Bang. In a matter of split seconds, it grew from the size of an atom to the infinite space where we send our costly telescopes like James Webb. And whatever we do, we'll never see where it ends. The problem with the eternal inflation theory is that, according to it, similar abrupt expansions keep happening in different regions of the universe. As a result, there's an endless number of new universes. Oops. Hawking and Hertog trashed this theory in their article proving that cosmic inflation can't last forever. Just like economic inflation can't make a gallon of gas cost who knows how many dollars. Consequently, it turns out that if other universes really do exist, there aren't so many of them, and they don't offer a wide range of conditions. Roughly speaking, you could have a different profession in a parallel world, but your national identity won't change. What's most unbelievable is that scientists have found a way to check Hawking's multiverse theory. To do so, we need to equip a spaceship with a special detector. It could find evidence of other universes in the microwave background left over after the Big Bang. But remember what I told you, this wavelength is a hundred times longer than what the web can detect. So our dear friend is helpless here. But don't get discouraged though. The most fantastic worlds lie not in some mythical parallel universes they're right here in our galaxy so so we, we're not equipped to figure it out now could be in the near future get some more things out there into space that can assist the james webb and um figure out but what's most intriguing statement that was just made was that if there is a uh, another is there a multiverse or, or maybe your parallel universe with your parallels yourself out there, your, your same exact self somewhere else might not be as far as you think. That just, ah, that does something to me. <laughs> that, oh man, uh, you think it's another L out there doing reactions? What is he doing reactions to? I don't know. I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking parallel universes they're right here in our galaxy will the james webb find signs of life on exoplanets as of 2022 there are already more than 5,000 discovered exoplanets and 2,000 more possible candidates but who cares if all of them are lifeless that's why scientists keep passionately searching for habitable worlds Here's the clue. If a planet has any live organisms on its surface, they'll definitely leave behind typical atmospheric biomarkers. Above all, these are molecules of water, ammonia, and methane. But the main surefire sign of life as we know it would be the presence of chlorophyll. This pigment gives plants their green color, which is vital for photosynthesis. 
Chlorophyll absorbs visible light, and it's seen perfectly in infrared. If web all that stuff you learned about chlorophyll and all that type of stuff in your science classes, it's coming to light now, huh? You feel good about listening back then, didn't you? I wish I would have listened. Absorbs visible light, and it's seen perfectly in infrared. If Webb captures an anomaly like this on one of the exoplanets, this will mean that plants are growing there and getting energy through photosynthesis. If there's an abundance of phosphine gas molecules, everything will point to bacteria able to survive without oxygen. Quite recently, astronomers detected traces of phosphine in the clouds of Venus, but we'll need additional research to better understand its origin. Anyway, even the most powerful ground-based telescopes can't detect any of these biomarkers on other planets. Planets. They're simply blocked by the Earth's atmosphere. There's also no chance to find life using the Hubble, as it works in the infrared range where biomarkers go unnoticed. Webb, on the other hand, can observe a 10 times wider portion of the infrared spectrum. In but that's cool, though. We don't need it to do that. We just need the ones we got out there now to locate the possibility. Once we can locate the possibility that there may be Life there, okay, then we know what we need to build and construct and and budget, get a budget for and and build so we can send something there. You know what I'm saying? Right right now, we just need to identify it and we can regroup and build something to send out there. And if there are any biomarkers on any exoplanets, it'll spot them. And yet, astronomers' number one dream is to discover a highly developed civilization with its own unique markers. If aliens are searching for people, they could find us by observing the very high concentrations of carbon dioxide and monoxide, ozone, and lead in our planet's atmosphere. It's thought that the Milky Way contains around 1 billion terrestrial-like planets, so the chance of finding at least a primitive life form is higher than ever. And that's going to be the James Webb's most valuable gift to humankind. I wonder what astrophysicists are going to do after they solve all the mysteries of outer space. Perhaps they'll take a break from the painstaking exploration of the universe. They'll turn on some relaxing music, make the web radiate some gentle infrared in the background, and lazily watch how some intergalactic love affairs play out. What? That's important for cosmology, too. That's some interesting, uh, it's an interesting statement made earlier um, that we're, what we're out there looking for. But when you flip that, what if the, the things we're looking for, the life that we're looking for to discover is also looking for us? You know what I mean? <laughs> flip it around. Think about that. Put that in the back of your mind. Just be like, yo. You know what I mean? We may not be the only ones out there searching for life. Maybe it's life out there searching for us. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? Just the possibilities is endless, man. Like I said, as long as they give us the information, don't try to hold nothing from us. We're all grown. We ain't no kids. Don't try to keep the information from us. We want to know, man. What is there a multiverse out there? How is it? Ex how is the universe expanding? You know what I mean? Black and white holes, all that type of information. A star when it explodes, what happens, all that type of stuff like that. And mainly, mainly what planets could possibly have life on it. You know what I'm saying? So James Webb, can it prove it? We shall see. We don't know. We shall see though. Y'all get at me in the comment section. Let me know what you think and stick around and stay tuned. The next one I'm gone. Peace.